No. Hello. Hello. You got me? Can you hear me? No? We're, we're off to a good start here. All right. Can you hear me now? All right. What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming out today. We made it. <laughs> Who has the first question? Start with John, please. John, uh, we spoke yesterday and you said, listen, I got to start focusing on myself. I got to concentrate. I got a championship fight this Saturday. And then you went out and did a, a fan meet and greet in the middle of the NGM lobby. I'm curious kind of why you wanted to do that, what your thought process was there. How's it going, Los Angeles? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're good. I said, how's it going, Los Angeles? How are you guys? My microphone's not working. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I got coffee. All right. Yeah, we're off to a bad start here. Yeah. Ahead, I'm not sure if this thing's working. All right. So, uh, yeah, I can't. I don't think they can hear me. Can you hear him? Yeah, he, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so, yeah, uh, basically, this situation has been really crazy. I understand that there's a lot of fighters that came from all over the world to be here, um, guys from all over the country to be here. And, um, and I wanted to try to make this thing as right as possible. Ultimately, uh, the UFC is, our slogan is, we're as real as it gets. And uh, I mean, people spend their hard earned money and uh, it's all about the fans at the end of the day. And I wanted to do what I can to do it. I had a, about an hour to wait until my next workout. And I said, dude, let me go out there and, and, and meet some of the people who make this all possible. So uh, I did a meet and greet last minute, me and my team. They worked as a security squad. We didn't need it because everybody showed up with so much love and appreciation. And uh, it was great. About maybe two, 300 people showed up to the MGM lobby and got to get personalized stuff done. So I felt really good about it. It was really great. Uh, John, you, you, as positive as you're being, you know that no matter what you say, no matter what you do, there are going to be people, probably the rest of your career, that say you're a cheater. How do you address those people knowing you're going to have to do that? Um, you know, I, I am, uh, I am, I am, uh, in an interesting spot in the UFC. You know, I feel like I'm a polarizing athlete and, um, and it's just going to follow me. You know, it's going to follow me. Uh, the way I deal with that is by waiting to, uh, waiting for USADA and now VADA to continue doing their research of what's going on in my body. And I, I think through their study, I'll be vindicated. Um, and, uh, and just continue trying to stay on the right path, you know, trying to do the right things and, and just focus on the things I can control. Thanks, John. Yeah. Alex, quick question for you. Um, you. You had a chance to pull out of this fight. If you had concerns, you know, you had a chance to say, I'm out. What, what kept you in it? I mean, did you consider it at all? And, and why did you ultimately decide to say, no, I'm, I'm going to fight? No, I'm ready to fight. That, that's what I'm here for, to fight. I don't no, I'm at the fight. That's, that's... Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. I'm at the fight. That's it. I'm at the fight. Nothing else. Nothing less. Whatever this guy's saying, it's just bullshit. He's, he's just terrible, man. This guy is terrible, I'm telling you. He is terrible. You know, I'm, 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 I'm here to fight. It was nothing else. I was just here to fight. But the thing is, I'm just like, you know, it's, I'm flexible. It's all good. But, you know, we have... Friends, family, fans coming into town having plans, they have their budgets, and they have to, they have to like reschedule, we're planning everything, whatever. I mean, whatever this guy is saying, it's, you can't take it serious. You can't take it serious at all. He's just terrible. He is terrible. And he will eat it. He will eat it on Saturday night. I'm telling you, he will eat everything on Saturday night. Alex, when you, when you did a media day last week in Las Vegas, you were asked point blank, do you believe John Jones is a cheater? And you were very kind of political about it and, and, and you know, said nice things basically. Now after the latest developments, I'll ask you again, do you believe John Jones is a cheater? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Man, this guy is not confident. He's not, he has to put shit in his body to be confident. That's how he is. What did what, you say about confidence? What did you say about confidence? I'm not confident. What are you saying? What you're not picture? confident. You're not what? confident at all. Why? You said a picture in my mind? You're not confident. Wait, 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 wait. You said a, a picture in my mind? 
What did you say? Just what did you say before that? I'm not confident. There's a picture in my mind that's not confident or something? No, I said you put shit in your body. That's why. You're not confident. I put confident. shit in my mind. You put shit what, in your so body. So what, what have I put in my mind? What have I said? In your mind, in your body. You put shit in your body. Oh, I put shit in my body. That, yes, you do. That makes me confident. You're not confident at all. So I, I put a pictogram of a steroid in my body, and that that makes me... Well, whatever you're saying. Whatever you're saying. Okay. Okay. It's good. It's good that you believe. It's good that you actually believe. But you know what? It doesn't I'm matter. Like, it's it, good that you actually... John, John, John it doesn't it, matter. It's John. good that you actually... No, no, it does matter because you just said that. It's good that you actually believe that a microscopic pictogram somehow has, 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 uh, has allowed me to become more confident. I'm glad that you believe that. I'm glad that you... I'm glad that you John, believe... John. Is it legal stuff you put your body or is it illegal stuff you put in your body? It doesn't that matter you what it is. I'm glad that you believe that I beat you and I've become everything that I've done because of microscopic pictogram. I'm glad that you believe that. That's what you, you believe your, that. That's you what you're getting believe, confident from. You believe that, that On I beat Saturday you. On Saturday it will be different. You believe that On I Saturday beat it will you be because of a microscopic... It won't help you this time. You believe that I beat it you because of you a microscopic time, pictogram. It won't help you this time. You believe that, huh? I believe that, yeah, of wow. course. Wow. It's wow. illegal shit in your body. Wow. Illegal stuff in your body. Oh, yeah. like some oh, no. protein it, what, or whatever. No, what, what was found in my body is 100% on the ban list. 100%. There you have it, guys. There you have it. And you honestly believe and it's still going down that I beat you and I beat every other 24 fights that I've ever been in against the baddest dudes in the world because a microscopic pictogram. You honestly believe that? I do. Good. I do. That's funny. Good. Dana, ahead, I just, just want to ask one for you, Dana. I know that this hasn't been an ideal situation, but, uh, you know, there has been some fan backlash that said, man, the UFC didn't care about the fans making this decision. How would you address those people that said, man, you, you did us wrong by, by making this decision? Yeah, listen, it's not an easy decision to make. You have to, you know, you got to pull the trigger and <clears throat> you got to make moves. You're not going to make everybody happy. You can't make every fan, every fighter. But we gave the fans in Las Vegas the opportunity to get tickets first, and the tickets are cheaper. We had over 3,000 people, you know, buy tickets here that had tickets in Vegas. We did everything we could to, to make it better. We did what we could do. Uh, so, Dana, I uh, wanted to ask you, has there been any uh, compensation that's going to be given to the fighters since they'll, they'll have an increased income tax? By any, any conversation what? Compensation for the, the increased income tax in California for the other fighters? Who's going to pay my income tax in California? Right, and, and also, also the, uh, the, the increased medical costs? What? And the, and the increase uh, for the medicals for California State. Yeah, it is what it is. It's either that or not fight. Nobody gets paid and nobody does anything. It is what it is. We had to move it. And, and listen, it, 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 uh, it's costing everybody more money. It is what it is. Question for Amanda. Um, you've obviously put on a lot more mass and muscle for this fight. Just what have you done just to test how your body will move differently and, and react differently? Um, you know, in the Train fight? with the bigger people in the gym. I always do that. This is my original weight class, 145. When I stepped in this country, in Strike Force, it was my first fight was 145. And I went down to 135, and now I'm here again. That was awesome. Um, and then uh, another one for Alex. You hey guys, yeah. just let us just talk. Let us just talk. Uh, Let's show his back there. Alex, hey, I, I, I got I to gotta agree with Cyborg. Yeah. It's really hard to do this, guys. I, I love your enthusiasm, but it's hard to do this. I mean, we're, we're men. We're men. <laughs> let's, let's be men, not teenagers. Um, Alex, this is your third time fighting for the, the light heavyweight title, and you know the previous two were close decisions. I know you said you want to finish this fight. What have you done to make sure that this one doesn't go to the judges' scorecards? It could be... It, I, I don't... It could be points, it could be a finish. You know, I'm just making sure I'm pushing my body in training, and I'm feeling great. Who has the next question? Go ahead, buddy. Question for Alex. Hey, Alex. Uh, so, like you said, there was a lot of people who were impacted by this change. People had to reschedule uh, such things. Did you have a lot of people and close personal friends and family who were impacted directly by this? Uh, yeah, a couple, a couple. And uh, as mentioned before, this is first time with Charm. What do you feel have been the biggest lessons that you've learned from each title fight so far? 
I just learned I have to dig deeper. Yeah. Dig deeper every time. And question for John. Uh, as you mentioned, it was a pictogram or something or whatever, but uh, it is still legal by uh, the World Anti-Doping Organization and such. What steps have you taken to make sure that there's nothing like nothing like this ever happens again, considering that it now has been a reoccurring uh, occurrence? So me, I wasn't, I was no genius and throughout schooling. So I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning all this, all these things about about pictograms and and oh, picograms. See there, see there, exactly, exactly. I'm learning as, as as we speak. I'm still learning what this stuff is. And the funniest thing is someone trying to convince me as an undefeated fighter that I'm not confident because of a pictogram. Say it again. What, say it with a pico, pico, pictogram. I think, you're I think, shit I, in your body, John. I think this is so funny that the person who lost is, is making an excuse of a microscopic chemical that, that is, instead of just saying John Jones's balls is way bigger than mine's and that's why he beat me. That's why this, I, this that's guy, why I have this, positive uh, piss tanks, huh? This because guy, no balls. this guy, huh? who has the smallest is, balls is, there, you this and me. Guy, this guy is, is... I'm the not, not having illegal shit in my body. This guy... I say, I have balls. You don't has, have balls, my this friend. This guy has found... You get illegal shit in your body. This guy has found a way to justify why he lost. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. We'll see you on Saturday. We'll see you on Saturday. It's hilarious. We'll so, so I've, I've, been, I've been being educated by, by USADA, and now I'm being drug tested by WADA to prove my innocence, right? I'm being, and so from what I understand, what is found in my body is like taking a grain of salt, or let's say a grain of sugar. But John, nobody cares about it's a grain that, of salt. And you have illegal shit chopping, in your body, John. Okay, yes. Okay, 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 you just said your piece. Now, 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 now let me explain, let me answer, please. What a pictogram is, a picogram. <laughs> okay, fuck off. Okay, what a picogram is, it's taking a grain of salt and chopping it into 48 million pieces. A grain of salt, imagine this, imagine a grain of salt and chopping that into 48 million pieces. That is why I beat Alexander Gustafson? Are you serious? I mean, guys, wrap your head around what that, what that is. But wrap your head what around that is. And he really convinced them, and, and everybody else that I've beat in the past has convinced themselves that, that, that this is not the truth that you're looking at. 48 million pieces, one piece of salt. And that is why I almost knocked him out in the fourth round? John, I mean, I mean, John. And the craziest, that's, that's, the craziest John, thing is that the we people. We have a fight coming up now on Saturday. Oh, you still have that peak We're in here. Your body. Yes, I What's sure up? did, and that's why I beat you. That What's picogram. Up? What? I would love to give you one picogram back, one grain of salt back. No, and, thank you. I'm and good. Then, and then let's see no, what you do you. with it. No, I'm good. I have my balls. You John. still would have been a bitch in the championship rounds if I with a picogram in your system. Who has the next question? Question for Dana over here. Okay, Dana. I, I've heard you say, and I've heard Jeff Davitsky say, I've heard Andy Foster say that you guys are 100% sure that this is not a new ingestion, that he didn't re-ingest anything. How do you know that for sure? That's a question for Dana. Oh, you, wh yeah. what's the question? Sorry, I, I heard you and Jeff Davitsky say, and Andy Foster said it as well, that you are 100% sure that this isn't as a result of a new ingestion. This is the same metabolite that was in his system back in July of 2017. The question I don't seem to find the answer to is how do you know that? Because that's what the experts are saying. The experts are telling us that's what they do. Okay, so how else would I know? Okay, the experts I, I, are telling and us. And I don't expect you to know, but who right, are the thank you. Who are the experts? Ask Nowitzki. Call Nowitzki and set up an appointment to have an interview with him. He'll tell you. Ariel, I can, I, can help, I can help you with that. You know, you probably can't, actually. You, you, let Nowitzki answer that question for you. I would, I would love to. Nowitzki's the expert on that. 
John, John Jones call, is calling it a pictogram, for Christ's sake. Okay? Unfortunately, uh, he's not here. I don't here. think he can answer that question. So talk to Nowitzki. Okay. He's also said that there's 12 to 14 other cases of this happening. Yeah, you got to talk to Nowitzki. If you want to talk drugs, talk to Nowitzki. Okay. Can I just ask John what he wanted to say? John, what, what did you want to say? I'm, I'm going to take the advice of my boss and, and yeah. have you talk to Jeff. Yeah, let Nowitzki talk about that. Okay. Uh, a question for Alex. How do you feel about the way this has been handled from your perspective? I'm just happy we got a fight on Saturday. I'm happy we have a fight on Saturday. I only, f I only feel for, 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 for the fans. I feel for, the, for all the fighters' family members coming in and friends. That's not, but, but for myself, I'm flexible. I'm happy to fight, and I'm happy we have a fight. You know, it doesn't matter if it's on rocket fuel or whatever. I'm going to beat him anyway on Saturday night. There you go. You said the same thing. You say the same. You say the same shit every interview. I'm in the best shape of my and life. You're not, John. I'm in the and best shape not. of my life. I'm in and the best shape not. of my life. I'm ready. I'm in the best shape of my life. You say the same dry ass shit every fight. And you're not, Shut John. Shut the fuck up. And you are not. And you are not. You said the same shit before you got knocked out in front of your whole country. Shut the fuck up. Okay, okay, John. Okay. Uh, Who has the next question? I just, sorry, I just have one more for Alex. Alex, do you have any problems dealing with USADA? Daniel Cormier has said he doesn't want to deal with USADA anymore. Do you have any problems now dealing with USADA after this? Do you have any issues working with USADA after this? After this incident, do you have any problems working with them going forward? No, I don't, but what choice do I have? Well, okay. Nothing? No, it's all good. All they right. can come whenever they want. Who has the next question? Uh, Go ahead. For, for John, over here to your, to your right, uh, you, and, you and the UFC have had a rocky past at times, a rocky relationship. Were you surprised that they did this? They, they uprooted the entire event from Las Vegas, Florida to LA. Were you surprised they, they went out of their way to do that? It's a hard question to answer, honestly. Um, I think, I think through science, I think, I think I will be vindicated. I've passed the polygram test. I, I with the, with, with pretty much the FBI, which means if I was lying, I go to jail for perjury. I passed a polygraph test, saying that I've never intentionally taken anything illegal to to enhance myself. And now that science is starting to show each other, show, show itself. You will realize that, I mean, people, half the people that are judging me ha ha haven't opened a chemistry book since high school. And, and so, 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 I mean, it, it's true. It's, it's so true. And so people are, people are, are ignoring the fact that a picogram, they, people are ignoring the fact. This shit is so small that it almost should have never been brought up. It's so small. It's such a small amount. It has no effect. And I think, I think in a round of, I think, I think a lot of the professionals, whether it's USADA or the UFC, are realizing, dude, John has actually been, he's kind of like a guinea pig in this situation, almost wronged in this situation. Even though it was in me, I think, I think this is a way of fixing, fixing a wrong and making it right again by not, by not canceling this fight and keeping the fight on, ultimately for the fans, because this could have been canceled. And so... Um, even though a lot of fans got hurt in this situation, um, we saved the event. Look at all the people that got to be here. All the, pe all the people that are planning on ordering the fight around the world. So, um, so yeah, and, and, like, and like Dana said, the organization is doing everything they can to make it right. You know, giving discounts and, and, and comping families and, 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 and doing all types of stuff. So. The, so changing the event instead of canceling the event, I, I feel is is the way of kind of wronging, uh, making a, a, a making this right. And then just for for Dana, uh, Jeff Nowitzki was on Joe Rogan's podcast earlier today, and he said the first time that USADA found an adverse finding in John's drug test results was actually in, in August, and then again in September. Was there any way to go to the commission maybe earlier to get that cleared up and say, hey, this this is what we have? Maybe go to them earlier rather than waiting for for December to tell them. Yeah, I don't know. You'll have to talk to Nowitzki about that. I, I don't know exactly what the timeline was when those guys uh, were dealing with that stuff with USADA, but, but he has all that information. You can talk to him about that.
And then but at the time when, when it came down to us dealing with it, there wasn't time to handle it, no. Did this, you even know about it before before then? Because they said, uh, Jeff said no. it was in August. Did you even know? Yeah, no. And then, and then just one, one last thing, Dana. The finances as far as moving the entire mm. event from Vegas to here, how right. much is that guy that cost you guys in, uh, on the front About end? About $6 million. Yeah. And then it, does that get offset by pay-per-view at least? I mean, will you guys end up will, making Will that money be offset by what? By, by the pay-per-view revenue by keeping John. You don't know. I mean, pay-per-view is always a, a crapshoot. You don't know how that's going to go. Listen, this was the right thing to do. At the end of the day, USADA is not going to put their reputation and their business on the line for one fight or one guy. We would never put anything on the line for one fight or one guy. We could have canceled this fight, moved it to March um, until he had time to go through the Nevada State Athletic Commission stuff. Could have done the fight in March and just did this in Vegas. This was the right thing to do. California was already very um, intimately involved in his situation. They knew everything. It, it was easy to get done, and the venue was available. So we moved it. We're here. This is how we work, man. This is what we do. So that's it. Dana? Yep. Uh, UFC 233 was scheduled to, ha uh, to take place here in California. UFC 233, right? Yeah. Um, was canceled. Uh, did you ever think was about... Was it canceled? It was moved, but... Okay. okay. Did you think about... Did you think about moving John Jones and Gustafsson? What's that? Whoa, what do you mean? It was, it was moved. <laughs> you guys are acting like we're, we're talking shit to each other or something. Did, okay, that event was moved, and what's the question? Did you think about moving John Jones against Gustafsson to UFC 233 and maybe keep the... Well, we could have moved it anywhere. We could have moved this fight anywhere, but, but the reality is, is that... Th this guy flew in from Sweden. He trained. He's been off for a year and a half. He went through a full camp. Um, he went through a full camp. Both guys are healthy. Both guys should fight. If we could make the fight happen, we were gonna. We, we called California. They understood his situation. Um, like I said, they, they were very involved in it. There was a venue available, so we did it. It's really that simple. So what about UFC 233? When is gonna I mean, happen? we could have done this fight in March. We could have done it in when we were talking about coming to Ant. We could have done it on, on any card coming up. Okay, okay. Okay, my next question is for Cyborg. I'm gonna ask in Portuguese to Cyborg, please. Yeah, Cyborg. Chris. Chris. Hello. 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 Uh, Chris, uh, antes de você entrar no UFC, né, teve muita questão de você provocações, enfim, declarações de pessoas do UFC. Quanto tempo demorou para que você desse essa volta por cima? Quando você sentiu que deu essa volta por cima? E como, como é a sua situação hoje, você fazendo a primeira super luta da história contra a Amanda, feminina do UFC? Eu acho que a primeira coisa, eu nunca escutei, nunca dei, dei valor o que as pessoas falam para mim, tentando botar o para baixo todas as vezes. E todas as vezes que eu entrava para lutar, eu sempre mostrava que eu iria provar o contrário. Né? Eu acho que... E, e não respondendo da forma que eles deveriam escutar. Né? Eu só entrando dentro do octágono, fazendo o meu trabalho... E, com certeza, isso fez com que eu chegasse onde eu estou agora. E eu acho que mostrando isso para eles e conquistando cada vez eles, porque, na verdade, muitas pessoas me julgavam é, apenas o que estava escrito na mídia, apenas é, o que a minha rival ficava falando de mim. Mas, quando as pessoas começaram a conhecer quem é mesmo a Chris Borg, eles começaram a ser fã, começaram a me seguir. Isso que é mais importante e mais, dava mais valor para mim. Hey, guys, I'm sorry. Hi, over here. Um, I'm going to start with a couple of questions to John. How come this is the third time we're actually taking focus from the fighters and the fights and talking about what you have in your body, whether, whether it's a picogram or a pictogram? Why, why have you tested now? Positive. Uh, next question, please. Thank you. Oh, wow. wow. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, Dana White. Uh, tell me, why are we still having this guy here instead of seeing a uh, two-year suspension like Frank why, Mir? Why, why, why are we still? Why are we? Why are we still? What? What's the question? Hold on. Someone hold, hold, on, girl, hold, on. Just, hold on. Sit down. I'm sitting down. Well, I want to take the mic from her. Better questions. Better I journalism. I, I, don't, I don't understand what your question is. What, is there what, a real what's the reason? Better journalism. For this, Better journalism. You suck. Better journalism. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let her talk. What, what, what's the question? What's the reason for John Jones having a picogram in his body? We just I don't know. We, we, yeah. 
that's been the topic of that's this why entire. I'm yeah, well, you, you, you get, I, I told you, like I told Ariel, talk, talk to Jeff Nowitzki about that. If listening. you want to know the science of what's going on, talk to him. All right, Alexander, what are your thoughts? Because it's been uh, the focus is on this instead of the big fight coming up. It's finally, a good question. Finally, a good question. I think it's. I think I think it's you know it's 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 bad for the sport. It's it's bad for the organization. It, it's it's not good for anyone ha having this type of conversations before a fight. But what a, it it doesn't really matter to me. I'm you know we're here now. The fight is happening, and I'm happy for that. And and I've never been this ready ever. So let's go. Let's do it. Uh, last question to Cyborg. Cyborg? Yes. yes. I can see you don't have that energy in your face. Are you affected about this? About what? All this mess. You don't have energy in your face? I have a lot of energy. I can fight <laughs> now. Who is this girl? Who are you? Hey, I, I have a lot of energy. Where did you come I from? All right, next question. Yeah. Who's got the next question? Dana. Yes, ma'am. Dana. I'm uh, Annika. I'm from Swedish Radio. I wanted to ask Alexander, but I need to do it in Swedish because I need him to speak in Swedish. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. När man flyttat hela galan för hans skull och så vidare, känner du att du har en rättvis chans för att du du vann ju även den förra matchen. Tycker många i Sverige i den nationen som han talade om tidigare. Tror att du har en rättvis chans här att att vinna den matchen? Absolut, jag har aldrig varit så här redo någonsin och det, det, det spelar ingen roll. Jag är flexibel om mig, jag kan tävla i Vegas, jag kan tävla i LA. Det är sak samma, jag får vinna och jag kommer vinna på lördag, det är det som gäller. Men den här... Uh, the, the last fight, the last time you fought him, it was very, very close. What have you done to prepare yourself to beat him this time, even in the eyes of the judges? Should I answer in English or... Uh, I, på svenska. Swedish. Uh, jag bara pressat min kropp ännu mer. Jag har lärt mig mina misstag, jag har lärt mig från mina förra matcher och jag kommer inte om samma misstag utan jag kommer kliva in där och göra allt jag kan för att hända det här bältet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Next question. Dana to your left, right here. Yeah. You know, obviously I, I understand you, you feel comfortable with everything that is that has happened. You feel comfortable with Jones test. You feel comfortable with moving the fight. But I just wonder if at any time during the conversations about moving this, yeah. you talked about well, what's what's kind of going on right now and that there there would be so much talk about about steroids and banned substances and metabolites before a fight, before a fight, a rematch that we all think is one of the best fights of all time. Did that ever come into the equation of like, well, we don't want that to be the conversation before a fight like this? Uh, it's it's going to happen. It's it is what it is. You know, uh, if we did this fight in March, it'd be the same. We'd be talking about the same things. And listen, John Jones has made some some mistakes in his life. You know, whether John's going to well, what's John going to do? How's John going to test? What you know? What's going to happen? It's always that's going to follow John. John needs to go in, win on Saturday night, continue to stay straight, narrow, and keep winning and and cement his legacy. It's just if he does that. The, the talk will go away. And John. John, I guess a little, were you going to say something? Who's that? No, do you have another question? Yeah, yeah, I, okay. for John. I've heard you talk about this rematch with Gustafson, and, and you've said that some people thought you lost the first fight, and that's something that you wanted to correct. You wanted to prove to everybody that you were better than this guy. Do you feel like you still have the opportunity to really prove that with the circumstances as they are? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, winning this fight, winning this fight convincingly, finishing this fight, um, absolutely. Uh, for, there will always be asterisks. There's asterisks next to who's pound for pound the greatest of all time. That, you know, so, so um, in my mind, in my mind, there is no asterisk. I was afraid of there being an asterisk next to my career when I was uneducated. But as I'm learning, even though I st still can't say pickle gram or pickle gram, whatever, as I'm learning what this really is, um, I'm actually almost mad that it was even mentioned. I mean, it's invisible. You can't you can't take a picogram. gram. It's 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 that, it's that small. You can't you can't knowingly take it. That's how small it is. Um, 
<laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, guys, joking, joking. You guys are crazy. Um, so, so I have completely set myself free from any type of, you know, these, I listen to fighters from the past be like, oh, he must have, this is why he beat me, because he had this in him, like, and I get why they need to do that, to feel better, to feel like I can do it the second time. I get why they're doing that. Um, but I, I've taken off the asterisks next to my, to, to, to what I've done. I know what I've done, dude. Every push-up, every sit-up, freaking showing up to practice early, be, leaving there late, dude. Wrestling camp since I was 12 years old. Freaking endless tournaments. I know what I've done. And so, so, um, so after beating Gups and Sound, I'm gonna be right back on the track that I've always been on, which is, 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 is being one of the all-time greats. And I know that in my heart, no matter who believes me or not. Hey. So, one, one more for you, John, just one, last one. Yeah. I've heard you say that you're angry that this test came out, that you don't think it should have came out because it's such a small substance, and USADA is not, is not treating this as a failed drug test. Do you feel like, are you gonna do anything about it? Like, are you gonna complain to them? Is there any kind no. of recourse that you can take about, no. should this have information have even come out in the first place? Well, no, and that's another thing. People are like, oh, John must be paying off USADA, which is impossible. If Lance Armstrong can't afford to pay off USADA, you think I can? It's, it's like, um, no, it just doesn't happen. USADA's been around for so long. They're, I mean, they're so credible. But I get it's me, so people like to come up with crazy stuff. And like, just like when I first came out, people were like, oh, his arms are long, that's why he wins. There's, there's, there's always going to be something. Um, what's your question again? Because I'm ranting. Well, j just that, is there any kind of recourse, any kind of conversation you can have with USADA no, about like, no, why No, no, I'm not going to come at you. I, no, I, there's nothing I can come at USADA about it. The fact is, I'm man enough to say, there is something in my system that is microscopic, that is so small, that does not help me do shit. Um, th there we go, a soul, I like that. Um, and there's, 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 no, there's no reason to come at you, Sada, about this. What, what I am is a guinea pig for our sport. Um, what I'm finding out is that this shit is happening all across sports. There's so many athletes right now that has uh, the M3 metabolite in their body and it's coming in pulses and it's coming in waves. And, but my, my situation is the most public. Um, but the reason why I'm here today being able to fight is because it gives me no advantage. Science is getting so good that they're finding shit. I guarantee you there's, there's many people in the audience that has shit that's on the ban list. That's never done, that's never done, any, that's never done any type of steroid that wouldn't even know what this shit is. So um, the fact of the matter is there is something in my bloodstream. It does not give me any advantage. And I'm grateful that you saw to found it because I'll be able to educate myself and know more about it. And for, for fighters in the future, it's gonna help out a lot of people. I think the science is just so strong. They're finding shit that, 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 you know, it's like, it's hard to explain. But I, I know for a fact that this is gonna help fighters of the future and our sport. And, uh, and, and, and no one said it, it should be easy being who I am. I accept the difficulty in it and uh, I'm up for the challenge. And, um, and like I said, through science, I feel like I'll be vindicated. So. So no worries, this is all gonna be a blessing in disguise for me. Uh, I'm gonna ask first in Portuguese, then I'm gonna translate to English for the girls. Amanda, é, primeiro eu queria saber, parece que assim, né, você teve a Misha depois a Ronda, e aí era sempre uma coisa assim de provação, eu queria saber o quanto isso te motiva até hoje chegando na luta com a Cris, para que isso faça de você uma atleta melhor lá dentro. So I asked her about um, her improvement since she faced uh, Misha and then Ronda, people were always like doubting her. How does it affect her to improve herself inside the cage? Falar em português primeiro. We're gonna speak in Portuguese first. É, me ajudou muito, né? Primeiro foi o UFC 200 que mudou tudo ali naquela semana foi uma coisa louca e depois veio a uh, minha luta contra a Ronda e aí também foi aquela coisa toda she's back, she's back and, e esqueceram completamente da campeã naquele momento. E é como, é como você mesmo falou, esses dois momentos que eu passei na minha vida, com certeza me ajudou mentalmente a superar qualquer tipo de obstáculo daquele momento para frente. Então, hoje, né, com, esse, com tudo que está acontecendo com esse show, é, eu já estava é, já meio que esperado por mim, porque eu já passei por vários problemas no show com, o mesmo, é, com a mesma carga que está sendo esse. Então Tá tranquilo para mim. Me ajudou bastante as últimas lutas, com certeza. 
you guys speak English? Uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Oh, I say, I'm saying in Portuguese, or oh, in English now. Uh, my, my UFC 200 and right after was against Ronda Rousey, that for sure helped me to go through everything after that. Now, UFC 200 changed everything in the last, in the last minute. I was the third fight of the night. I became the co-main event. I became the main event. That was crazy for me, you know? And for sure, that, that moment uh, making me like ready for everything after that. And now we're here today, and all the crazy things going on this week, I'm ready for that. And I've been there before. Ué, o que, que você acha que você traz de diferente que as outras adversárias da crise até hoje não trouxeram para ela? What do you think um, you're going to make different and you bring to the table differently than the other op opponents that Chris faced? Eu acho que o pensamento de campeã. Eu penso, eu, eu penso exatamente como a Chris pensa. Então, é, eu acho que essa é a diferença, entendeu? É, vai ser campeã contra campeã. E que vença melhor. Uh, I say, like, the, dif the difference between me and Chris' last opponent is I'm the champ as well. I know everything she think. And this is the difference. And uh, the smart and the better one is going to win. Less, it's going to win the 29, for sure. Uh, now for Chris. Cris, você está bem favorita né, nas casas de apostas e tudo mais, e eu queria saber o quanto esse favoritismo acaba podendo te ajudando, te atrapalhando, como é que você lida com isso é, para que não deixar realmente que a emoção tome conta de você na luta? So, Cris, você é realmente a favorita in the betting, I don't know how to say it, but the, the sports betting, sorry. And how do you deal with that, uh, to not affect you inside the octagon? Na verdade, assim, eu nunca fico checando quem tem a favorita e quem não tá. Na verdade, eu sempre sou focado nos meus treinos e isso não me afeta, porque, na verdade, eu, eu acho que eu chego lá e faço o meu trabalho e eu não levo em consideração o que tem por fora disso. I said, man, I really don't check the internet to see who's going to be favorite or not. I just focus on doing my job in the octagon and that's it. And last question for Dana. How big this is, like, this is the, is this the, the biggest... Um, female MMA fight in the history? Yeah, this is for the baddest woman on the planet. 135 versus 145, both champions. Two of the baddest women in the world. We'll see. And they're Brazilian. Do you compare this fight to another like uh, male fight? In well, well I, think, I think if you look at, at the women's division since we started as it's continued to grow and get bigger and, and, and create more stars and, and big fights, um, you know, this is a fight that I've been talking about for a long time that, that I felt needed to happen. You know, I think that these two are, are without a doubt the two baddest women on earth, and, and uh, we need to find out which one is. It's, it's a fun fight. I love this fight. I've wanted this fight for a long time, and this is, as far as the women's division goes, the biggest fight ever in the women's division. And um, as far as the men go, I mean, anytime you can put together a super fight with two legit champions, um, It's what I love, man. Love it. Do, do you think this opens like to other divisions, other women divisions to do more stuff like that, more super fights like that? I literally heard nothing you said. What did you say? Say it again. <laughs> do you think this fight opens to do like more challenges like this in other women divisions? Well, it's, no, it's, it's not about that this opens up more challenges. It, it's about timing. You know what I mean? Cyborg is the absolute best 145 pounder in the world. Amanda is the absolute best 135 pounder in the world. And right here, right now, this is the fight to make. It's the perfect time, the perfect place, everything. That's what determines whether you make the fight or not. John, John this question is for you over here on a lighter note. The other day you tweeted asking fans for suggestions on walkout songs and... and All the answers went the obvious way. Were you expecting it to go the obvious way with the jokes? And have you picked a walkout song for Saturday night? Oh, man, I heard all types of jokes. Oops, I did it again, Britney Spears. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, hey, sing that. <laughs> do you, do you think you'll go that route and play uh, one of those songs? Or are you going to no, go something inspirational? No, I, I, I picked a really great song. I think the lyrics to the song is very fitting. And then you guys are going to have to watch UFC 242 to check it out. No, 232 to check no it hints? out. Huh? Not, not a hint? Not a hint, not a hint, no, but, but it'll be extremely fitting. Yeah.
I got five on it. Damn, yo, you guys are funny. A la verga. You good? All right, we'll, we'll take one more question. Who's got the last question? Yeah? Go ahead, buddy. Oh, we'll take two more then. You want to go too? Yeah. I mean, I just want to ask, it's, uh, you can't help but notice the energy you have. Uh, it's a lot different than normally a couple days out from a weight cut. So I wonder, you know, if you win this title, you'll have two belts, but is there any chance you'd say featherweight is really where my future lies? I don't want to put my body through going to 135 anymore. You know, it's soon to say about my, my future, you know, and we'll see. We can talk about right after the fight, and I have better answers for you. Thank you for the question. Fair enough. Thanks, man. And Chris, uh, I wanted to ask for you as well. You know, Dana's saying this is for the baddest woman on the planet. I mean, if you win this, do you believe this solidifies that you are, no question about, the best of all time in the women's division? You know, you know, you know, everybody always try and say I'm the best fighter in the world. You know, I'm the baddest one. You know, I always like to, my fans said that. I like to go to the octagon and do my best I can, be violent, be everything I can do there, and get the win and get my belt back home. But what if my fans are gonna say about me, this is important for me. But in, I'll say though, but, but in your mind, do you believe you're the greatest of all time? I train really hard for me can do my best there, and then I always let my fans say that. If my fans said that, maybe I can believe that. Actually, I have a question for Chris and Amanda. Uh, do you take this fight personal or is it just a sport or business? Would you shake hands? Would you become a friends after this fight or no? For me, since day one, always was business. You know, you can see from my posters, you can see from my social media, all business. I don't know her. You know, I don't have anything against Amanda. All the time people ask me, you do like fight Amanda? I say, man, I don't want because she's Brazilian, she's the champion, but everybody make this fight happen. You know, I just, I just feel like it's so hard that you be the champion and I know if after Saturday I beat her, nobody gonna look at her like the champion 135. And this is how I was, uh, this is how I was, this is how I was But I'm still gonna have the belt at no home. I still her. go down and defend my belt. I know, I'm saying, let me finish. And then, I still, and I still gonna said, have my belt. I'm gonna me. fight you excuse and me. go Let down to 35. Me. Let me finish. Let me finish. And then that's it, you know. I but you know she's pushed this fight so long. We supposed fight Amanda after Holly home, and then we supposed fight her after I beat the Yonakunaskaya. We supposed fight July. We supposed fight September. And she's heavy injury. She say, you know, tomorrow we're gonna be Saturday gonna be the day. And I'm ready, and they're gonna be an amazing fight. And I don't have anything against her, you know. We're just gonna fight Saturday, and I do my best I can, and back my belt to home, in Jesus' name. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, LA. We'll see you Saturday. <laughs>